We are live, friends. Thank you so much for being here. I am so glad to be talking tonight about one of my nearest and dearest programs with some near and dear friends here on the Zoom. Um, I'm Ellen. I'm the programs director at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a white woman with brown hair and bangs, and I'm wearing a brown sweater and black tortoise patterned earrings. I'm in my bedroom, and I have a glowing pink wall behind me. I just want to say welcome to Hollywood Fringe 2021. This is our official kickoff event um, as we're preparing for an amazing festival. Woo woo! <laughs> if you're coming in live from Facebook, just wanted to let you know quickly that I'm going to um, be making a bunch of announcements. Uh, and feel free to chop, prop, uh, bleh, plop anything in the chat that you would like. We'll be monitoring the chat and sending it live to the Zoom room here. And for anybody here on Zoom with us, feel free to drop anything in the chat as well as we're talking. Um, I'm going to make a bunch of announcements and also talk a bit about the program before we get started. But then I'll be second stepping back and letting our amazing panelists, aka our committee members for this program, take the stage virtual stage and talk about their experiences, give some best practices, and go over some crucial parts of the application process. Oof, announcements first. About the Fringe. Um, the Hollywood Fringe is an annual open access community-derived performing arts festival that usually takes place every June. This year, it'll take place in August. During the Hollywood Fringe, the arts infiltrates the Hollywood neighborhood in fully equipped theaters, parks, clubs, churches, restaurants, and other unexpected places. We host hundreds of productions by local, national, and international artists and companies and independent performers. Participation in the Hollywood Fringe is completely open and uncensored. We don't curate. Um, by opening the gates to anyone with a vision, the festival is able to exhibit the most diverse and cutting edge points of view the world has to offer. Additionally, by creating an environment where artists must self-produce their work, the Fringe motivates its participants to create a spirit of entrepreneurialism, entrepreneurialism I can't say that word, in the arts. <sighs> Words. Finally, we're a nonprofit company. Uh, the festival gives 100% of box office revenue back to participating artists and venues. That's over $3.4 million since the inaugural festival in 2010. Recent announcement. We just announced our digital festival format. And yes, we know the big, big question is, will there be live performance? And the answer is, we don't know yet. <laughs> We're taking these conversations extremely seriously with our county and city contacts, our venue partners, and you, our amazing artists. That's why we formatted this year's festival and by extension, the scholarship program in a way where people can live stream from a venue, which we know will be possible in August. This would lead to a very easy transition to a hybrid model if we are able to start that conversation. We're not going to make the decision as fringe on this until it's very, very clear by health and safety standards that we're not doing our community any harm. To learn more about this and to get a ton more details, please come to our town hall number one, all about registration on May 1st, which is also the day that registration opens. On that day, we'll get into deep detail about what the exciting idea of what this year's fringe could look like and we'll also have a lot more guidelines to talk about right so we're so excited to talk more about that as we get more answers <laughs> um this year's festival dates we have previews august 5th to the 10th and our digital opening night party will be on august 11th the festival will run august 12th to the 29th how to engage now? Make sure you're signed up for fringe emails if you have not go to our website you can sign up at hollywoodfringe.org Follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, like us on Facebook. You start to use the hashtag HFF21. That's what we do every year to track all of the amazing things that are happening as we build up these 400 plus shows that perform with us every year. Um, and if you have any questions at any time, please always email support at hollywoodfringe.org. The wizard behind the computer will answer your questions as soon as possible, or if not, send it to one of us who can answer them for you. Um, okay, Woo -hoo -hoo. upcoming events. Artist Think Tank next Wednesday, April 21st from 7 to 9 p.m. Tickets are available at hollywoodfringe.org. That'll be a great space for artists to connect and talk about what the, the possibility of a digital festival and what the arts are looking like right now. And that'll be led and curated by participants and Fringe staff will merely be on here to let people talk. <laughs> oh, righty, righty, righty. 
back to scholarships. This is where I'm going to be like, hello, here's all the details about scholarships and like what we all know right now. And then our beautiful committee members will take over and you will stop hearing my voice so much. Um, all right, back to scholarships. Our applications are open and due Thursday, April 22nd at 11.59 p.m. It is a tight timeline this year. You can see the application on our website, hollywoodfringe.org forward slash forward slash scholarships. <laughs> there are a few basic requirements for our scholarship winners to adhere to and a few special requirements this year even due to COVID safety. One of those COVID requirements is that your cast and crew must reside in LA County. That's typically not a part of our scholarship program, but because you would be filming in a venue and there's all of these extra things this year, that's one of our requirements. The other special requirement is that you only be required to produce one live stream event. We encourage you to do more than one. Most people at Fringe do three to six shows, but we wanted to make the requirements super loose for this year only because of the amount of pressure COVID can mount on us as humans. Some of our other requirements, which are applicable annually, is that Fringe scholarships are available to first time Hollywood Fringe producers only. You can have acted in a show or participated as an audience member, but you should have not produced a show at our festival. All participants must contribute to the ethnic, cultural, racial, intellectually, or physically disabled, or the LGBTQ plus diversity of the fringe community. All scholarship recipients will be required to self-produce their project and will be held responsible for the liability and risk associated with that. That being said, us here at Fringe, during that process, really try to make sure that you have a solid support system so that you're able to do so. Um, some of the best practices before our committee jumps in, in order to apply, please create a project page on hollywoodfringe.org for the 2021 festival. If you don't receive a scholarship, you don't have to complete the registration process. So it's not one of those things where like it commits you to doing fringe. Another thing is please read the full application before beginning to answer the questions. You're honestly doing the best you can by being here, so I'm not totally worried about you skipping this step. But Many participants have found it also easier to finish the full application in a Word slash Google Doc and then copy and paste the answers into the form after completing all the questions. It's a great strategy so that you're able to keep your word counts and even use handy dandy spell check. Oof, I'm done talking. Basically, tonight will be an hour of talk. People can ask you questions in the Zoom chat or on Facebook comments if you're watching from there. We have another amazing staffer, Alex, who will be feeding those questions into the chat. Um, now I want to introduce our amazing panelists. If you can give us your names, your pronouns, your visual descriptions, any access me needs we might need to know about, your fringe experience, and how you got involved in scholarships. That's a lot. So I'm going to paste it in the chat <laughs> so that you guys can have that as a handy dandy reference. And I'm going to call on somebody to go first. I'm going to call on Natasha. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Let me just get this chat open. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here. It's nice to see you all. Um, okay, names. My name is Natasha Lewin. My pronouns are the She series. Um, my visual description, I am wearing a blue uh, shoulder pad, um, high collared shirt. I have um, a, a batik behind me, a very colorful batik, and a lot of pictures and postcards and stuff on the wall. I have brown hair and olive skin. And um, I'm very beautiful, I hear. Um, so <laughs> no. uh, my access needs, uh, yes, I am hard of hearing. Um, I just checked the mute button. I'm like, am I talking to myself? I am hard of hearing, but um, I use, usually, usually use captions um, when I watch things, but um, I wear these wonderful Apple iPods, which are really great. Um, and they're very close to hearing aids. My fringe experience is um, I was a diversity scholarship winner in 2017. Um, for my play chatter, it was my first time actually being a playwright, <clears throat> excuse me, I had um, been a very good audience member and a very good friend to all my friends who have had shows in the past and love theater. And this was my first time to really write a show and I got I won um, one of what was one of the winners um, in 2017, which just really um, kind of skyrocketed my career, it gave me a lot of opportunity in television and in podcasting. And, um, and I really do owe a lot of it to Fringe um, for getting me really out there and giving me, um, letting me, you know, it's, you're very creative and you're, you're telling these stories and they're very important to hear. And, um, and I realized mine was one of those that was important to hear and it helped a lot. Um, very therapeutic. 
and how I got involved in scholarships. So after um, I won the diversity scholarship, I've been a mentor every year. Um, so basically it's a, it's a past diversity scholarship winner who decides, you know, who wants to mentor somebody who wins. And, um, and that was really great. I'm also involved in the obviously scholarship committee um, and the access committee, which isn't involved with the diversity scholarship committee so much, but it's still any way I can give back to Fringe. I really try, I also sponsor an award um, at the end of the year and have done that since I've won because uh, it's just been really good to me. And I just love watching everyone's show and learning so much about everyone. And I couldn't, I, it's just such a special program and um, it's from the National Endowment of the Art for the Arts. So um, it's just really great. And I think that, you know, good for you guys for being here because your stories are all really important. And should I pass? I'll pass to Shirley. Hi everyone, um, my name is Shirley Tao. Um, I'm an Asian American woman, my hair is short. I'm wearing a gray sweater, sitting in my living room. Um, there's a white puppy on my lap. Um, he'll occasionally probably wander off if he gets bored of sitting here. Um, I got involved with French because I love live performances. I think that's the thing that I have missed the most is um, seeing something beautiful and being in an audience. I feel like I've craved that so much in this past year. Um, also, I, I got involved because Ellen wrote me in. We're very good friends um, and, and comrades in Los Angeles. And um, I work for the Library Foundation. So I spend a lot of my time in the literary arts um, and working with authors and illustrators and doing uh, storytelling and curating programs for them. Um, I also uh, spend a lot of time doing, uh, thinking about new ways of storytelling. And I think Fringe, what, what a better place than Fringe to uh, reimagine storytelling. Um, and I've been on the scholarship committee, I think if we're including last year, three years now, um, and it's always so exciting to see all of the applications come in, um, to be in conversation with my fellow committee members. I think that's always an exhilarating um, afternoon because I always leave feeling so empowered. Ellen, I think I remember last year in your living room, that was particularly special. Um, and looking back, I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited for what we have to come, but I'm also so grateful that we had that afternoon before everything closed down. Um, I think I covered... Uh, everything in generally. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to reiterate how excited I am um, for you all who are really taking a risk, honestly, to um, be the first ones to kind of venture out back into the world. And I'm looking forward to what we will learn from you all today. Um, I guess we're playing, a, we're playing a, great, a game. I'll pass it to Les. Um, hi, uh, my name is Les Kirkendall Barrett. Uh, pronouns are he, him. So I got to describe myself. I'm African American. I have short dreadlocks and I'm wearing a yellow shirt and I am in my bedroom um, uh, recording here. Um, okay, so how I how I got into Fringe, I've been fringing since the year 2000. And so I've done Fringe festivals all over the world. I got involved with Hollywood Fringe, the very first one. So I've seen it grow. I remember when Hollywood Fringe was just like two weekends. And so I've seen it. I, it's, it's kind of impressive to see how it's blown up. Um, uh, oh, and then I, I, I started with, well, well I was part of the initial scholarship committee. So yeah, um, and I've seen that grow too. I took a few years off because my touring schedule got really busy. So I wasn't even in town for Fringe, um, but it's, you know, because of missed COVID things have changed. And so I'm gonna be back in town for Fringe and I thought I would get involved. Did I miss anything? Just that you helped, you and Chris really did help develop this program. And so thank you all for being back at every year and making sure that this is the case. Uh, it wouldn't be the, what it is without you and Chris. It, no. It's cool to see, and it's cool, to, for me, it's cool to see not only the people that do shows, but like how they've developed their careers 
after doing their shows and more than one person has come up to me and has been like, oh my gosh, you know, the scholarship is what helped me to get my first performance off the ground. So it's, it's, I'm happy to do it. And I will pass to Chris. Hi there. I'm so sorry. I was like, oh yeah, I got to mute. Um, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Chris Farah and I, with Les, started the Diversity Scholarship Committee with an amazing Hollywood Fringe um, person that doesn't work for the Hollywood Fringe anymore. Her name is Megan. And um, Ellen worked with Megan before and they kind of like, she passed the baton. It was, it was awesome to watch, but okay. So let's get into this. My name, Chris L. Farah, Chris Farah, Chris L. Farah on social media, pronouns her and she, a visual description. Well, I'm an olive skinned girl and I have short, like a short bob. It's like golden streaks. Um, I'm like Lebanese Syrian, but you know, like if you look at me, you might not know because especially I just said the gold streaks and, and that's bleach. Let's just be real about it. And um, I'm wearing a black and white striped dress, like long sleeve dress. I got it at Target, but it's supposed to be a little Parisian vibe. So you just give me that. Okay. So I would say it would have like a natural dewy makeup look. You didn't ask, no one else talked about that, but I feel like we should. I also want to talk about the fact that A, Natasha is absolutely gorgeous. So she's right. Surely that dog is so cute. Unless it has like literally the most springtime, like high spring is in the air polo. So clock it all. There's some visual descriptions and my commentary and other people's. Okay. Uh, my fringe experience. So um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I love theater and I love comedy. I love like improv and sketch. And so I did, I did like a one person show. I do a one person show I'm done in a minute. And she's a bio queen, like a camp queen character. She's based on a song Bobby, from Bobby Gentry. It's called Fancy If You Know. It's like a Southern storytelling song. Stor Southern storytelling song. So I did a couple of shows. I would do shows as Fancy uh, at the Fringe. Like I did like Fancy's one, per one life, one person show where Fancy would play like different characters. And then uh, I came back a diff next year and did a cabaret show. When I did the cabaret show, it felt really different and I won a bunch of awards, and which was really great for me. And I really enjoyed it. It made me feel really good about myself. And um, truthfully, just talking from like a time of, I think that before then, before I had created the fancy thing, I was like kind of in a rut artistically. I had, I was in, uh, involved in some comedy theaters in LA and I just felt like maybe, oh, you know, my like true self wasn't able to shine you know like maybe I wasn't able to like show what I could do and so I felt from that like that just frustration I created this show and um learned how to produce my own show when I put it up at Fringe and um learned how to market a show because I did Fringe you know and learned how to sort of balance the fringeness of, I really want this to be good work because this is my name and I am a good artist and this I care about this shit, as well as the fringeness of that we have to get it done and theater's theater and it's gonna be grimy. And all of these skills, I, weren't, I wasn't planning on it and there were times when I was upset about it, but a hundred percent, I am so happy and thankful that I experienced them. And that's what Fringe gives you, period, the end. Now, there are other things that Fringe gives you that, I mean, it's this is a weird time, like friendships and, and camaraderie. And in this digital age, I so hope that new time Fringe people will experience some of that, or at least a taste of it to know that when we're all back together, there is some joy and beauty and fringe of just this connection to theater artists that are doing this thing we all love in a dark space at night or in the day depending on your time slot and day slots are great don't say no to day slots okay um yeah so the last the last thing i'm gonna say my god so yes I, yes i've been doing this diversity scholarship thing for a minute i'm so happy to connect with you all thank you so much for uh you know being all here i love you guys so back to ellen right I didn't miss anyone. No one else was in this, right? God bless. That was great. Well, thank you all for sharing all of that. It does warm my heart every year for us to talk about this. Like, this is the beginning of that, like, kind of fringe wave that starts. And I'm just so excited to be back in this space with everyone because it's just going to be a truly special year as we learn how to digitally connect in that way. And there will be some amazing events. Alex, our events director, will make sure of it to make sure that we're all able to connect digitally and safely and have a really 
amazing experience. Um, why scholarships? What makes this program so special and has you coming back year after year? I know that we kind of touched on that, but is there any other um, elements that we might want to chat through or something that people might want to talk about on our panel? I'm going to popcorn that. Whoever wants to go can go. Or I'll call on you. I'll go. What, uh, the, so the question is why, right? Why, um, why scholarships? Well, because diverse voices are important and they're crucial and they make all the difference in everything that happens in the world. Um, but yet there aren't enough diverse stories. And so um, diversity can be gender, it can be uh, sexual preference, it can be race, ethnicity, disability, um, if I, you know, there's, I feel like there's some, some stuff I'm missing there, um, but, uh, um, neurodiversity. Um, and I think, I think that a scholarships are a great way to really have the backing of something that already has an established name like the fringe. Um, so you, you, you know, they, they don't curate any of the shows, but when it comes to scholarships, it is something that they promote. So it's really nice to get the backing of a theater company that, um, or a theater uh, festival that, um, that wants people of different backgrounds and experiences and walks of life to tell their stories. They're super necessary. And, um, and like I said, they, these stories are, are very important to everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, we, nothing happens unless everyone is, feels like they're being heard and if they're being seen and if they can relate to somebody on stage or in a photo or in a, you know, we, we need to see representation um, of ourselves. And that's the way that we grow and move and um, probably, you know, obviously preaching to the choir with artists, but scholarships give you such a great opportunity because you have the fringe, you have the fringe um, I don't want to say stamp of approval because it's not about that, but you have the fringe actually championing your work. And it's important to have a champion, no matter if you're just starting out or if you're not starting out. And like I said, for me personally, it was my first experience really putting my work out there. Um, I was a journalist before, so I was read, but I was never seen, I guess. And, um, and it really, you know, it really helped me personally too. Like Chris said, it really was a, um, a, you know, a therapeutic um, process and, um, and necessary for me as much as it was for the audience and as much as it was, you know, to have the, to have the fringes backing. Um, so I definitely say go for it. Like Ellen said, it's a really tough turnaround, <laughs> the 22nd, but, um, but it's not, it's not terrible. And I think that if you're even, you know, on the fence about it, just try because it, you'll never, ever regret it. You'll never regret it. Um, I'll go next. Uh, so yeah, the, the thing is, it's like, you know, d diversity, especially now in this day and age is extremely important. And so why a scholarship is important is because I, I personally met people uh, who the only reason why they didn't do the fringe was literally because they didn't have the money to do it. Because let's face it, fringe, the money does add up. You know, in the past, I've seen people who have had to drop out of festivals, for example, because they didn't have the money to continue or they didn't have the money for costumes and props. And so this is just a good way to, to um, give an opportunity to someone and, and to get a leg up and, you know, um, just, it, it's just a shame when I talk to someone and it's literally the only reason they've had this idea or they have this show that they've written and the only reason they aren't doing it uh, is because of the money. And P.S., I have been blown away with some of the scholarship winners. Um, and just, you know, that's when I, that's when I realized this thing is important because I it's it's I can't even describe just some of the amazing shows I've seen where I leave and my mouth is like hanging open because I'm so impressed and then realizing hey this is the only reason why this person could do this fantastic work because of our scholarship so um yeah that that's all I've got 
Can I say some things? Um, I also want to specifically address, yeah, some the exact same things we're talking about, the money, some added expenses. You know, here's the thing. In reality, besides your venue and besides your venue, you uh, you really don't and your reg registration cross, which is a normal like if you don't have the scholarship, this is just like a normal participant. Those are things you have to pay for. Okay, everything else is really about what you need and what you have and what you can make do. That is so. Those things now. Listen, you're going to want to have some more money to make postcards. That might be a got print order that is like $120. That $120 can be what you pay for if you have a friend that makes the poster for you. And if you, you know, uh, find a fun way to like hand them out, but you also could pay someone to do it. And then you could spend uh, someone some money on a publicist. Like it's everything is about relative what you what you have and what you need. You don't need to spend that much money. What you what you have to do is learn how to be smart and fringy. And when I say learn how to be smart and fringy, rule number one, for instance, networking and connections are free. And you have to have the skills to be a good talker and to have those authentic connections. But that shit is free. That is free. Why connections are good? Because if you make a connection with someone, maybe you're like, hey, you're going to come see my show. I'll see your show. I'll send people your way if you want to be in my program. And that's just like free marketing. Maybe uh, it's um, having uh, someone that's doing another show do your box office for you for free. And then you do their box office for you. You're not paying anyone to do it. Maybe you have a friend that can order do a lighting board. I don't know if, it, or maybe you're just like, I literally need lights up, lights down. I mean, all of your expenses are choices you make as, a, as an artist. And that is to the, to the greatest or the detriment yours. Now, I know that I like, I know I wanna spend money and I understand that it's like easier to do so. But because of this digital fringe that we're talking about specifically this year, it might actually give you a great opportunity to be able to record something and have it for relatively little money. Because this is LA, you could record on anything. You know, like you have friends that have cameras. You just do, this is, you just, you have groups you're in that you can make a post about. Like, I think that I don't want money to set people back from creating art. There are ways to get around it. And I think that specifically this year, it could be your year. So don't say no to things. I would try and get into it and find a way out. I mean, that's how, that's what a hustler does. That's how people are ingenious. That's how people make strides, you know? And yeah, so that's what I would say for that. Don't be scared about the money and have it stop you. Have it be a challenge that you get over. And again, this is not producing on Broadway. This is, and Theater Row is great. I don't want to speak ill of Santa Monica Boulevard, but um, get it done. Don't like say no to yourself so fast. And yeah, try to get the scholarship because that would be a bunch of money. Oh. <laughs> um, let me hop in. I will say that um, like I, I, I'm not um, particularly embedded in the same way some of the way these fine folks are, but what keeps me is because is exactly what Chris is talking about. It's because it's a little loose, it's a little ragtag, it's a little interesting. And um, like I mentioned earlier, I that's what I'm that's what I want to experience this year. Like I want to experience something completely new. And I um, love reading through the scholarship applications because it feels like um, you know a little bit like the work that I do in my day job. But like it feels like discovery. It feels like oh, this is like a fresh take on something or this is a fresh voice or like the production details in this application are very interesting to me and honestly like that's what we talk about when we meet up to discuss some of these things it's some of it is innovation some of it is tone um some of it is access um but that's that's you know that's what keeps me coming back is looking for kind of you know who who is thinking two, three, four, seven, ten 10 years ahead right now? Um, and what are they workshopping on Fringe? I feel like that is what is so special about this festival and um, and this community and, and these folks who are interested in 
like Chris says, like doing the lights for you because they're also invested in like what you're doing. And I think that's really unique. I just keep thinking, Natasha, actually, this whole conversation that everybody has been saying reminded me of like the transformation I've seen of your show in all of its iterations, where I saw it in 2017 and it was like, these uh, actors with their th was it like striped pajamas that everybody was wearing uh to like represent that and how that translated to film and as the budgets kind of got bigger that really changed right mm -hmm. yeah um yeah so uh my story is very it's a very short story it's um it was maybe 20 minutes on fringe um and it was uh it, the best way it was described was um a one-man show with a cast and um, so there were the voices of all the self-doubt that were actualized on stage. And she was going through the emotions of battling her inner self-conscious voices that we all have. And hers were very specific to her, which was sort of me, but was very specific to her, but we all have them. And, um, and you know, the, the suicide ideation that goes along with, um, you know, self-doubt and all that. So anyway, after our show, um, I was approached by a producer who wanted to make it into a short and I wasn't ready. I was, was very much opening, you know, coming out of the closet about a lot of things. And, um, you know, and so I was very raw. And um, a year later, I ended up making this short film and we were an Oscar qualifier in 2020. Um, so, and that all came from Fringe. And I, you know, and now I'm actually transforming it um, into a novel. Um, so it'll be, you know, chatter the play, chatter the short, chatter the novel, and maybe beyond, because I feel like it's a story that doesn't go away. It hasn't gone away for me. Um, it's still there. And the more, and every couple of years, it's like, you know, the election, I need to, <laughs> I need to purge. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, there's been many development, you know, processes, processes for me. Um, and I hope that is what happens for, you know, all of you as well, is that your story doesn't just even if it does live and stay on the stage, great, because it's what it needed to be when it was. Um, but if it keeps breathing and living, I hope you can keep going and living with it. Uh, it because that's what artistry is, right? We always like, we always go back to our first love, which is creating the story that really resonated with us. So um, hopefully the diversity scholarship will allow you to not only tell a story that needs to be told that the world needs to hear, but maybe move forward in your own career, still telling that story. Um, you just never know. So, yeah. I just want to address the um, comment in the chat, which is, is it possible to update your scholarship application or to review your application before the deadline? Unfortunately, no, <laughs> which uh, the Google Forms is a little bit finicky. Uh, and it's something that we have thought about like changing platforms, but because of the things that we needed to do, this platform works the best, which is why I would definitely suggest writing all of your questions into a Google Doc uh, and using that to jump in before submitting it in, into the portal. That being said, if you have already submitted your answers and you're like, ooh, after this, I want to do some, some more edits, please feel free to reach out to me um, and, or just submit another application. And that's totally fine. We will make sure that um, that more recently submitted application is the one reviewed. That being said, please don't submit 10 applications because that might be like, ah, uh, but please feel free to like reach out and be like, ooh, this is the one that I want reviewed. Totally great. We will totally take that into consideration and we know that that does happen. Um, and again, if you have like issues going forward, please always feel free to read up, reach out to support. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, that would be my suggestion there. Um, before we move on, uh, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Chris to talk a little bit about the application process. Uh, and then we'll kind of dig into some of those application questions. Why, thank you so much. And uh, yes, as we, you know, transition. So that's a great tip. Definitely write out your questions and then paste them in and just know that we're reading them. You know what I'm saying? Like you'd be surprised. Like I, so what I mean that is like, read, read them and then be like, someone's going to read this and then decide if I should get money. You know, like for first and foremost, it's a great thing to do. I mean, <clears throat> Think about it. Think about what your tone is. Think about how you're sharing information. Think about the, you know, grammar or capitalization. Think about sharing your vision with people who don't maybe don't know you when you're filling out your application. That's like 
some tips, but, um, and include the links where like, we, we were researchers when we get it. So this is how it works. So sorry. So you guys are going to have your applications are going to be in a Google doc format or whatever and um, question and you, you have your answer and there's a whole big paragraph and you can really go to town because we're artists. And so I, I, we're, you know, we want to hear your voice and um, we want to also see your voice. You know, we want to like, we want to hear it, see, we want to like touch your voice. You know, it sounds weird, but um, we want to like, you know, get a, the best idea of you as possible. And I think that it's not just the content of what you're saying or how you're saying it. It's like what it's the, it's like the detail in which you're giving us a glimpse into how you approach a project. One project is your Hollywood fringe project, but on a very basicness, this Google Docs a project, right? It's a weirdness, but there, there, there's, um, there's a bridge that happens between them that we are, because that's what we're trying to do is like ascertain as much as we can what we can do for you and if we can do it for you this year. And we want to be able to do it for everyone, but there's actually a huge process. So we get these applications and uh, we all get together. We're like, who's available? You know, and we're like, this is the number of people available. And then we do simple math, honey. It's called division. Ellen does it because I can't do it. She divides the amount of applications by the readers. And then we have to go in and reread them. You know, and it's like, we read these questions and we look at your links and we like think about like what the story could be and and is it something that we haven't seen is there something about it that seems interesting like you know it, it, is it something that you would be excited to tell a bunch of people like there's this weird show that blah, 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 and it's a you know it has a weird hook or whatever and and so we all come together and um, usually it's at someone's house. And uh, I would say that person usually puts out a really good cheese plate and we eat it. But we read, but we talk about these applications, like almost like Netflix shows, like, hey, do you guys see, let me tell you about this one. This one is, and we talk about it. And there's like, sometimes there's themes of the season. We were talking, uh, I think that Natasha was talking about the kinds of diversity. I'll tell you in the journey of the scholarship panel, and Les can attribute this to like, you know, like the first year, it's like, yeah, we want some, we want like this, we want that, we want one of this. I'm like, and then suddenly it started like transforming into like, well, we want language access to people. There should be shows that like people that don't just speak English is the Englishness, like there's some for them. And then there was like, well, we should think about, you know, like social diversity, economic diversity, you know, like in the scholarship in itself is trying to give money to, to someone who, uh, who we feel like we want to hear their voice, but then it's like, oh, the, who, we give it to someone who like literally is doing a show on the street right now. My God, you know, there's so many different, like, there's so many different ideas that have been presented that I, that like opened my mind to the idea of diversity, you know, like, I, I was like, oh my God, I have like a closed minded di idea of diversity. It's so crazy, you know, whatever, God bless. But um, it's been such an amazing uh, experience to like see the thought and the wide ranging point of views that come with these applications. Some are crazy, some are crazy genius. Some are movement based and we read it and we're like, oh my God, this is gonna be beautiful, we can see it. And some are like, oh my God, I'm not quite sure this could be so great or we have no idea when this person could be bananas, you know? And then we sometimes just take a leap, you know, it's just, this is a different situation than the whole festival because the festival again is uncurated, but we curate this shit. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, there is, I would say also like a responsibility on our parts. We feel like we want to like, A, give people like amazing shows and give the theater artists opportunities to give them. And then also like, you know, I, yeah, expand that for the audiences. It's like what we're, tr it's like, yes, we want to give money for theater artists that have, want to share their point of view. And then we also want to create access for the audience members who would not normally come to the fringe because they have maybe not seen a version of their narrative on the stage. Because it's one thing to have the same fringe people seeing the same fringe shows. But, you know, it's just like, there's so many, so there's so many thought there's so many thoughts that go into this scholarship. It's not just about, do we have two black lady, one lady shows? Which believe me, like, okay, so we want black lady, one lady shows. I'm not, believe me, that's just me saying that, my loves. Okay, I believe me, I wanna see it. So we're over this cheese plate, right? Back, 
We're, we're, we're going over the applications. We're picking our favorites. We're talking about our favorites. Some are hard yeses, some are maybes, and some we got to get back to, and some are like, oh my God. But then we get to like this place and then we have like 30 where we're like all these people, we have to see their shows. But it's like, we have this many. So then it becomes a thing where we're like, how can our actual winners themselves be diverse amongst the winners so we don't have all one person shows, right? There's diversity in the actual things. We can't have all one person shows. So if we have 15 winners, let's just say five or, or seven one person shows, then we're gonna want seven ensembles. What if there is like 10 comedies? We might, we were like, okay, we want some diversity of, of what the subject matter is or the tone. We want some diversity of something's movement. We wanna have a, like a beautiful smorgasbord of like options where we're like, this is sort of our pick of the festival. Diversity smiversity. The winners of the diversity scholarship are the picks of the festival for me, period. Because nothing else is curated. Anyway, that's a personal opinion of me, Chris Farah, the one talking. And I don't wanna make that everyone's thing. I'm just saying that that's me. This is, anyway, so, now we are down to the nitty gritty. We are like arguing, okay, over like, well, this one's good and this one's good, but we have had this one, but what about this one? Have you seen the YouTube link? We pick up, we, we have laptops, we pull up the YouTube link. We all sit there, we're eating the cheese. We're like, oh my God, that's amazing. We're like, all right, fine, fine, fine. That one, that one, that one. And then we have our picks and then we have to make five alternatives and the alternatives are just as important as the picks. And some of us pray that people will drop out because our pick is one of the alternatives. That's how nitty gritty it gets, okay? By the way, historically speaking, if you're an alternative, you probably are gonna get a scholarship. Probably, maybe, because people have issues and people drop out and people's things go through, okay, truthfully. Then honey, after all of that happens, Ellen then talks to the people that we picked. They say yes or no, all alternatives are maybe coming in, coming out, and then we announce them. And then from that moment, you get a mentor. From you get a mentor, then you start, you also commit to yourself in the fringe. And by that means, we're not gonna just give you money for you to do your thing. God bless it. We want you to be like, oh, I'm into the fringe. Okay, you believe in me? All right, here it is. I'm gonna work with a mentor. I'm gonna try and make myself available for the scholarship uh, mixers. I wanna try and meet the other people that won their scholarship because if I'm amazing and I think I am, I bet they're amazing too and they are. You know what I'm saying? And so like, we want people to have, and this is just the fringe spirit of not being a jerk. This is just the fringe spirit of being like, yeah, I'm into it, you know, like, then your process is doing your show and working on your show and meeting other people and trying to network, like I said, because you don't have all the money in the world. And if you can get someone to be in your program and God bless, and you're working with your mentor and you are, uh, you know, like you're getting an inside scoop on how to do this. And that mentor is being like, oh, have you thought about maybe sending this blogger a link to your thing and maybe they'll come review it? I mean, I'm not quite sure how things are going to work in the digital age, but you know what I'm saying? There's so many different little tips and tricks that working with a mentor is. The mentor is almost as important for you as the money. Because the money is great for you that one time you do fringe. The mentor will give you shit forever, you know, like connections forever, whatever. And the way to do it well, you're fringe the first time. Uh, so let's see, we have our scholarships, they're going well, they're winning, they're like, <clears throat> they're working on their stuff, they're working with their mentor, and then they have their show. I mean, and they're the always, they're the best parts of the fringe. And that's how this scholarship program works for me, truly. Like, I go see the scholarship shows the most I can. Like we all have different little, like, you know, Natasha does the access committee, I think with less, you know, I, when the fringe starts, I, I'm not mentoring this year. I get involved in the fringe femmes, which is the LAFPI, which is the Los Angeles female playwright initiative. And I go see review shows as a little fringe femmes check-in. That's like my deal afterward, you know, but, and all these things I'm saying are just a bunch of like letters. But when you have uh, some people in the know, like your mentor, just say me, you can literally just tweet me and I'll tell you what I just said, you know, like on Instagram, on Twitter or whatever, like, you're just gonna, you know, you're just gonna like do the thing. So that's how it works. Um, did I miss anything? <laughs> did I talk too much? I miss cheese. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions for my chat. Um, I also am really loving that both on Facebook and our chat here, there's a lot of cheese talk and 
Royce Shockley are another part of our committee would be really proud because Royce always brings up cheese whenever he's on any meetings. Um, <laughs> Natasha can attest to that. Uh, how complete does your work project dialogue need to be at the time the application is submitted? Can you still edit further between application and opening um, your piece itself, not the application? I'll jump on that. Um, I didn't have it written at all. I just applied. And then when I won, I had to write it a play. So um, yeah, I would say depends on you, right? If you are somebody who procrastinates like me or um, writes really quick like me <laughs> or um, you, you know you know you work well on a deadline, um, then don't worry about that part. Just work on the application and then you have enough time until August. And then, you know, I mean, well, not August because that's when it goes up, but at least until you have a couple weeks slash months to really hone your um, story. But don't. I wouldn't worry about that part because I, I didn't. I have another quick question here, uh, which is um, with the links, is it a link of the show we want to do or must our show be a premiere? Uh, your show does not have to be a premiere. Uh, it's always great when it is, but it's not a requirement of the scholarship itself. As far as the fringe perspective, if the, um, the committee has any other uh, comments, feel free to. I wanted to say, yeah, what I'm, I think I said links. And what I mean is you're doing your application and if you've never done the show before, that makes sense. But maybe, but maybe you've done it, I'm but you have other projects and I just want to see you move on stage. I want to see you do like, if, you know, if you have a one, if you're doing a one person show, you've never done the show before, but you have like five minutes of you doing stand up, you better put that in the application. You know, like put that on the application, even if you're like, this is not the same material, but I'm going to see you move on stage and, and hear your voice. You have, I mean, yeah, people, and, and it's not even just links about, that's just an obvious link, you talking on stage. But if you are trying to create an atmosphere or a tone for me or show me something, a historical piece, and you want to put a YouTube link of some other thing that influenced you, that like speaks to your project, do that. Just tell me, you know, like this is a link of a YouTube video that is a hoobity hoobity hoops. And but as you see, the blah 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 loops is kind of like what I want to bloopity bloops. And I'm like, oh, great. You guys look at this. Eat that machango, you know. Anyway, I will, I will say that we are all trying super hard to say yes all the time. Um, hence the arguing, because there are, there are, there are applicants who I have fiercely advocated for who weren't even in my initial read pile that was someone else's that um, I gleamed and stole from because it's just we are always trying the hardest to say yes so the e the best thing you could do is give us as much information as possible to say yes to you whether it's links to previous shows because I also will say that we all know how to use google and sometimes it might come down to that we're just kind of like we can't, we can't decide and it's like, who has something up? Um, and I will, and this, and I will say that that's what I do in my day job too, where it's like, if I want to book an author for something and they don't have a contact me page, I just don't know what to do. And then I give up. And, and, and so it's like, don't make it difficult for us to um, say yes to you um, because we're not coming from a place of malice or um, being like, we only, we don't, I think that this community is the opposite of a scarcity mindset where we are always working behind the scenes to open up more things to more people and to broaden our community. Um, and so, yes, drop the links, um, drop the socials, drop the reels. We will watch them all. And who knows, it might, you know, happen in between cheese plates while we are fiercely <laughs> arguing with one another about um, one thing or another. Um, and then also just to kind of, um, bookend the earlier question about like how complete does the work needs to be um I, I I don't think it has to be complete at all really again like similar it's like it's more about like telling us about who you are what the tone is if you could communicate that and the vision for the overall piece um because I also think I might be wrong but you know there's still the mentorship element of this right we don't want to set you up to fail that's that's what um, diversity and inclusion gets wrong if they just tokenize someone and put them in the place with no infrastructure or support um, to make sure that they're successful. That's the opposite of what we want to do. And so if you have a show that's 
that has the potential to be really great, you're willing to put in the work and be in partnership and community with us. Um, we make a similar commitment to make sure that your show succeeds, um, that your vision comes to life. And so um, as a noted procrastinator myself, like I understand <laughs> where you're coming from. You're like, I don't have a dad. I'm like, yeah, same. Like, but I know what I want it to be, you know? So we can hop into those application questions because I think it's going to be so great to be able to like go through those and kind of put in some mindset of like, what are people really looking for? Or what is our committee really looking for in those questions? I want to really quickly address some chat questions um, from Facebook. In terms of runtime, what's the runtime range? One act, full length, et cetera. Um, Chris popped in and said, whatever your project runtime calls for is all cool, which is very true. But to give you some perspective as tar like as far as like what fringe like run times typically look like. Um, it's about 60 minutes as like the average friend show. Um, and people do account for that when it comes to like, I'm gonna run from show to show. Um, that being said, in a digital context, I think that is actually even more important just because people do have that Zoom burnout, um, that digital burnout. And that's something that we've been like really considering. Just to let you know, you don't have to put your runtime in the application. So that's a decision that you can artistically make if you're like, I want to do fringe and I want to be able to, you know, expand this for my larger stage and have a different version for fringe. Um, so please know that that's the case. And we have all like we've been talking a lot about like all of that there's this support system. And one of those biggest support systems is going to be our panels where we have other people who have won awards at fringe and gone on to do incredible things come back and share their expertise with you and be in community with you and be like, this is how I did it. And then you're like, I'm going to follow that rule and break that one because there's no rules at fringe other than don't be a jerk and follow our code of conduct. Like you have to be really a part, like willing and down to be a part of the community and to support each other as much as people are willing to support you. I think the gonna, oh, if it's a one person show, definitely, I think it should be 50, 45 to 50 minutes. That's sorry. When I wanted to say your show is your show, if you're doing a musical, an ensemble musical, honey, that could be two hours. I mean, God bless. It's going to be like a prime time slot, two hour thing. But if you're doing a one person show, I would suggest having it be 45 minutes to 50 top. And the reason why is yes, because people in... <laughs> in real life, in, in real fringe going, they do have a back-to-back -back thing. And if your show is at the complex, they might have a three o'clock and a two o'clock show. So if you're doing a one person show, this is one person shows only. And, or if you have a show that you can make 45 minutes to 50 minutes, I would consider doing so because I think it actually fits nicely. Why I think it should be less than an hour is because you actually need time to get in and out and people want to like move from what, like, so you'll give people 10 minutes to get out and go to the next show. This is a, it, specifically also, if you're a one person show, no one can really stand anyone on stage, honey, not even me. And I'm great on stage. One, you can't, no one can stand anyone for that long. Come on. Okay. So um, just wanted to clarify that. I love you. I also wanted to clarify too, um, because of COVID, there are like considerations as to cast size a little bit more than normal. Not to say that that would be uh, make it or break it if your application is strong, it's strong, you know, and our and that's what our committee will be making decisions based on. Um, but I do want people to consider that this is taking place in that in that type of way, and that might be a consideration. So think about is is it is it going to translate well to a live stream event, uh, uh, and how would it do be the best version of itself in that in that light? So I just wanted to name that because it popped into my head as a feed, as a feedback piece that we had gotten, and let's jump into that application. Um, so you have a bunch of things that you have to agree to at the beginning, like. I have read the form and I'm agreeing to all the requirements. I'm the primary producer of this project. My collaborators and I reside in Los Angeles County. It's like that I agree to attend a Hollywood Fringe office hours and one scholarship specific Fringe Cabaret. Thank you, Bella Luna, our cabaret director for hosting the most amazing, beautiful night where we get to feature all of our amazing scholarships at once. Um, then you're gonna put your name, your email address, your phone number, these basic things. We probably won't call you, but it's just in case we have like questions or qualifying things that we need to get a hold of you. Um, it's just great to have that as an alternative, but most of our communications done via email. So make sure that that's right. Um, have you been involved with the Hollywood Fringe Festival before? Yes, as a performer. Yes, as a writer or director. Those are great. Um, yes, as a producer. Um, you cannot have produced at our festival before. So it's kind of a trick question. <laughs> just letting you know that we also, um, we'll verify that in some way. We'll make sure that that's, that's knowledgeable. So um, 
there are other opportunities coming for people who have produced before. Just play tease that. Um, Hollywood Fringe project page. That question's required. If you have not made a project page, please make one by adding an account at hollywoodfringe.org, then it's selecting out a project. Again, you don't have to register that. Just put making the project so that we can visualize what that would look like on the site. And there's some questions that you can answer there. And that way we can also look into your um, page and see if you've done anything at Fringe before, things like that. Um, Quick note, if you guys want to be able to look at the application as the scholarship committee is going over the application, you can go to hollywoodfringe.org forward slash scholarships with an S at the end, and you can go ahead and see the application live as we're going through it. Um, I wanted you to see their lovely faces, so that's what we're doing at this moment. You have the project title. Have you finished writing your production? Again, not necessary, but it's just information for people. Like, are you close? Are you not? That kind of thing. Um, project title, what category best defines your production? Again, not really a consideration for the for the committee, as but it is as far as like having variety within the program. Um, this is what our first question is for our amazing um, committee members to weigh in on is please provide a description of the artistic production you plan to perform at the 2021 Hollywood Fringe Festival. Please include any noteworthy visual content. What is this question? Why is it there? <laughs> what what are we considering? I'll drop it in the chat. I'm dumb. Are you asking us to like talk about what we are? Okay. <laughs> okay, I love you. Okay, so this is, I mean, this is the question of questions. Why are you here? You know, this is like, what is your thing? You know, and so this is an artistic, this is a theater artist's, this is a theater artist's uh, I, questionnaire, right? And this is the log line, this is the crux of it. What do you wanna do here? What are you doing here? And the way you answer it is like, should be authentic to you, I think it should have not, and I don't want to say this like Hollywoodness of like a log line, but it should have this sense of like a passion behind it. There's a reason why, you know, like there's a reason why this story has to happen and why I'm, this is like so scripty, why I'm the perfect person to do it. But the same of like, what is it and what is your connection to it? And, and can I feel the fire behind you telling me about it? Because the fire either will mean A, it will actually get done, or B, there's a chance it'll be inspired, you know, because you feel, you sound inspired. So, I mean, yes, tell me what you're going to do, but also make it interesting. And also, please include any noteworthy visual con. This is what I'm talking about, where like, if you don't have an, a crystal clear idea, if maybe you're... Yes, you're like inspired by this crazy documentary you saw or this song that is like playing through and it can like, okay, let's just talk about if I, this is, this is great. If this is me and talking about fancy, which is the show I did, I told you about. Uh, I am right. I am going to do a, I, I'm going to create a character that from a song we all know, Bobby Gentry's Fancy, which is a Southern storytelling song about a pole country turn, turned, a uh, pole country girl turned highfalutin prostitute, who then at the end of this like very long song gives a whole stanza of like feminist theory and how she made it in such a world that like inspired me so much. Uh, my mother used to actually play it, sing it to me on guitar while I was a baby and also inside her tummy. And the weird thing is the actual story of the song is about how a mother teaches her daughter how to be a prostitute. Now, I'm not a prostitute, honey, but no problem with sex workers. I love it. Unless you think, of, you know, theater artists, you know, could be maybe ha -ha, back in the day, prostitution. But well, this is all here and there. But what I'm so, so if I like, if I was to say, this is the project I'm doing, and this is my personal, like, uh, my personal motto behind it is it's my love letter to like females and the struggle females have had to happen and the way that we have endured and we have to deal with judgment that we have on us. But in the end, like, we survive. Right, I mean, whatever, you know, and so this is me really freeballing, but 
I hope that you would A, kind of have an idea of what my show is, but also B, be like, this girl is fired up on doing it, you know? And it's like, give us that, give us both those things. A clear, a clear as a you can idea of what you are trying to do. And by clear, it doesn't have to be fleshed out, but you should have a crystallized idea of at least what you are trying to accomplish. What that is, why you were the person to do it and why you're and why you are into doing it. So um, and look, you even, yeah, and, and you can give us as much of content as you want, as many links as you want. You can give us pictures or whatever you want, right? Yeah, they can do whatever they can give us, they can drop in their their way, your way of, of trying to paint your show for us in this dumb Google doc, you know, but give yourself the opportunity to do so. Cause we're going to read every, everything we can, we're going to click on every link. Next question, Ellen. <laughs> yeah, there's also, and there's a specific place to post, post blah, place links, or if you want to like add any photos or things like that, you'll have to place it as a link because you can't upload to this weird document. But what you can do is give like a link to a PDF, which people have done, um, and put that in our link section, just as like a uh, FYI. Does anybody else have anything about that one? It's 500 words. So it's like a kind of like your bread and butter part of the application. And our next one, please feel free to respond to either the last question or this upcoming one, which is um, please provide a brief description of the theme or message you plan to convey through your production, your 50 uh, word max. Um, description of that. I know Natasha is going to jump in on that one because that was a, a big thing that Natasha had wanted to hear in the application for sure. Yeah, and 50 words. That's really good. Um, this is about why you should basically win the scholarship. Like what makes your show diverse? What makes it different? What makes your story need to be told? Um, and in 50 words, that's not a whole lot of words. I think that you can really convey who you are and what you're trying to what you're trying to tell with this story, um, and that's something that you know. As Les was saying, it's like diverse stories are more important than ever right now, and they're just going to keep being more important. And so, if you're going to win a diversity scholarship, tell us how your experience with whatever artistry creativity life background anything anything whatever it is that makes you you that makes you diverse that makes you um your voice need to be heard i want to know i want to feel like this this story i have to see this story the story is even if i've you know every story there's an old saying like every story's already been told um it's just different lenses right and i don't know if i truly believe that i think that not every story at all has been told. So tell me about you, tell me about this story or tell me about why this story needs to be made and, um, and really move me. 50 words is not a lot of words. So, you know, there's this old like screenplay technique or, or you know, in television where you're doing, um, you, you know, there's slug line interior, it, whatever bedroom, you know, day, and then they're trying to describe it and they just use three words, three adjectives, period, 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 you know, um, 70s decor, uh, smoky um, and, uh, and, and dank or whatever it might be. Um, but it's essentially, it's essentially giving us that feeling, eliciting that emotion of um, why we need to see it, why we need to feel it and why we need to give you the diversity scholarship. And then our next question, which I'm also dropping in the chat is, please describe how your project's content and cast may contribute to the ethnic, cultural, racial, mentally or physically disabled or LGBTQ plus diversity of the fringe community. And I think cast is kind of a key word here as well, because I remember last year we read this question over and over and so many people hadn't put in their cast if they had an ensemble. They had just talked about themselves, right? Was that that was something that came came up so often in the last year's deliberation? Um, but I'd love to hear from a committee member, Shirley or Les or anybody else, who uh, has any thoughts about that question. Well, what I would like to say about this one is, don't try to get over on us. Like you know, we have a black person in our cast and have like a twenty white person cast and a black one black person. Just make sure. 
it, it's, it's a diversity scholarship. Make sure you fit the criteria because we will find out. We will totally find out, you know? It, and you'd be surprised. And the only reason I'm saying this is you'd be surprised how many people try to get over on us with this one. Um, you know, um, you know, um, like, uh, do, don't you agree, Ellen? People try it all the time, you know? Uh, you know, I am a white woman. Oh, and I a story. So That's happened a bunch. There's like, but remember the, remember the one lady that was like, I'm gonna tell a story. I, it was like, it was like a, it was like a white lady telling a story of like, I am so sorry. It was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I, there's been craziness. I want to cry. I'm laughing so much. There's, anyway, I love you, Les. I, why did I jump in? Yes, Les. No, it's true. But yeah, you know, like this one woman, I'm a white woman. I'm going to write about the black experience. That's why I needed to, and it's like, no, no. So that's just with this, it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty cut and dry. Just make sure that you are, you know, a per, you know, you fit into the criteria. Just make sure you fit in the criteria. Right, it's not, it's not, the quota is not the only thing we're looking at, but we're not, we all got Google again. Like, it's not like you can't, cause also like we all live in this world. Most of us have been doing this for a couple of years. We know what to look for. Um, but I will say also like what we are looking for in terms of like casting specifically is like, that's where the story also matters. You can't just have like extras who are your people or who are your quota. Like we are looking meaningfully at the types of stories that you're telling, who your cast members are, how they're reflecting that, that um, how they're reflecting that community or serving the story. Um, it's not just like, oh, I want this scholarship. So I'm gonna fill in, you know, my extras with X, Y, or Z. Um, again, we're not idiots. And like uh, most of these folks have produced many shows before, they know what it's like. Um, and, and yes, those, those are usually the ones that are, are part of the conversation um, over the cheese plate that go out like in the first round, because it feels like, first of all, it feels disingenuous and it feels like they are pulling the wool and ill-intentioned. And it's frankly insulting as a committee member who is Again, it's a great cheese plate, but it is a lot of our time. You know what I mean? Like, and we're like, all right, like I could be doing, I could be sleeping in honestly on this Saturday afternoon. Um, and so, yes, to so that. Um, but those, but those are the things that we also think about. Um, and if you are the person who is submitting the application, to really think about your positionality in that, right? And like what you are doing to uplift either like diverse voices, producers, production, cast, like, what are you doing to do? And, and, you know, you don't have to like explicitly say it in your article or your article, your application. Sorry, I'm reviewing other things right now in my <laughs> other life. Um, but, uh, and then also like, how, how is this story serving them? And it's not just kind of like, uh, you know, white writer, director telling, like an oppressive narrative and winning all the accolades and nobody else is uplifted through that right like those are things that we um i i can uh pretty much guarantee all of our community members have a pretty uh strong sensor for we're like oh, okay we know exactly what this is um and so i i would encourage you to think um uh, deeply and intentionally about the purpose that your show is also serving um, and then, yeah, like who your cast members are and not just to tokenize them because that honestly feels shitty as well. Um, because like, I would agree with Chris that the shows that we choose are really good. Like they're really good. And they're not just like diversity scholarship winners because we want diversity scholarship winners. They're really good. And that's why they win. Like, because they're fantastic. And those are the shows that I want to see that I want my parents to see that I want my friends like I drag my friends to go and then we're also doing the mental calculations of like can I get from this theater to that theater in time like and so they're really good um it's not we don't just pick you know mediocre shows because they have a diverse cast like you know that's just that's not what we do here um 
I don't know if that made any sense, but, but like this, this this type of conversation, like to me, like I'm a community organizer by trade. And so that triggers like conversations about power for me that I'm like, all right, let's really think about who has power, where, how we're utilizing it. How are we empowering other people and who's actually making decisions um, in a production, a cast, a crew, a story. Um, Anyways, sorry, I will for now. (laughs) I was just going to uh, say, um, you know, I believe that all of the shows are amazing and beautiful and are wonderfully, they've been wonderfully picked and I, I have no regrets. Well, you know, there are some things that slip through the cracks, but there are, there are a couple shows where the writing was better in the application than the delivery. And I'll be honest. And, um, and so it, please make sure (laughs) that if this is something that you really, really want to do um, and you're a great writer and you know, you win, you know, congratulations, but please follow through in, in listening to your mentor and listening, you're taking the time to meet people from fringe and going to the Twitter chats and, and doing the work to ensure that you have a beautiful and wonderful show that we saw on the page because they all are terrific shows and I'm very glad to see all of them, but, but some of them did not have the follow through and that's really disappointing. Um, and so, uh, you know, you know, if you all win and hopefully you all will, um, just remember that the application is wonderful for right now and focus your attention on it. And then once you get it to focus all your attention on your show and really put the best show that you can. Um, it's not about getting all the people to watch it. It's not about it's not about the viewership. It's about you. So just remember that um, you have a great story to tell. Convey that information. You know why we need to see it, who you are. Um, you know why it's important to now, to ever, forever, and then really you know show up and show out. I just wanted, that made me think this program is not a one-time opportunity for people too. This program is an uh, essential part of the fringe infrastructure and it's not going away. Um, So I think that that's really important to name also with capacity as people are going through some of the toughest years um, that we've had to face in a few, in in a while. I mean, maybe there's, that's, that's a little bit of an opinion, but it has been a very tough couple of years. Uh, And I just want to, to name that and that it's not going away. And that if you feel that your capacity is too low, please keep in contact and keep going. As long as you don't produce a show, and you will be able to apply again. And that goes for people who have applied in the past and not gotten it. Um, you are welcome to apply again um, at any point, as long as you haven't um, produced a show at the Hollywood Fringe. But you could have adapt- acted or anything like that. Um, I just think that's important to say. Our next uh, question on the application is can you speak to the importance of diversity in a festival like the Fringe? And how do you believe your production will add to the need for equitable theater? And that's uh, a new question this year. Uh, and I was, and I know that Natasha had uh, come up with that question. And so I wonder if Natasha could take down that first uh, thought about that question. Yeah, uh, theater has been, you know, historically white for a very long time. And, um, <sighs> And it's 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 tough, you know. It's it's tough. It has been the tokenism. It has been the token cast. It has, um, and and anybody who comes from a theater background knows that you know it's tough to be in theater, and it's the the options are few and far between already. And then when you're a diverse character, you have to wait for someone to write for a diverse character to get you that audition. Well, why? why can't your lead character, you know, why, why can't anyone, why does everyone have to just, why is the default white apparent, you know, essentially. Um, so with theater to make it more equitable, we have to constantly ask these questions. Where, who are the creators? Who are helping other people? The playwrights, the producers, the, the directors, the stage, everybody, you know, rise up. Um, So when it comes to this question, it was really important to me to just keep hitting that diversity factor um, because it really matters. And like I said, you know, I I left off a bunch. Age is diversity. Um, uh, Gender is diversity or lack, you know, however, you know, you want to be, if if you consider gender 
even a, a you know a category um your who you are and obviously we're all here because we're diverse and in many different ways um so who you are how are you going to help change theater who are you going to hire how are you going to what is your production going to create the larger whole of diverse theater and to um and to break that stereotype of you know rich white people in furs going to experience broadway and what does that matter you know why theater should be accessible to all starting from birth to whatever age whatever again financials of diversity um economic diversity um so how are you contributing how is this show going to impact the ability to make theater accessible to everyone it's very important and it's something that um really matters to me uh i'm sure it matters to everyone here um but especially because it is really hard to see yourself you know sometimes and you know be understand somebody who's telling that story and that's why you know books are very equitable but theater still has a really long way to go so I just want to say, because there'll be people that will answer this question like this. This is Natasha's being really nice. People will see that question and say this. My show will add to the diversity of Fringe because I plan to cast uh, one bi lady. And if she drops out, I'll make a, I'll make a, a plan right now to try and see if I have any more bi ladies in my life. Like, or, or you know, I mean, this is, I'm being very, very, uh, rudimentary but we will get people to be like oh my plan is that i'm going that that uh the other producer you know i mean like it it's not that you have to talk exactly about all the struggles of the one thing that you think you're going to like uh embody for us in the diversity thing it's not that we're asking you to bear the brunt of all of that but at the same time the the pendulum will swing and people will be like oh i plan to um have uh one fourth of my cast be diverse so that'll speak to the diversity of the, of the festival but it's like oh, okay cool i mean it's just a great question to find that out if that's what that person's point of view is right you have to admit that's a great question to have for us if that is the point of view of the person doing the Google Doc. And that's another good reason why I think that's, I love that question for that reason. Like, how do you see yourself in relationship to the fringe? How do you view the diversity of your show in relationship to the fringe? You know, how does it add to it? Or, you know, what do you think your 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 addition to it is? But anyway, so that's, that's, that's another way to view that question is a really good filter <laughs> for us. Our next question is, how will this spe uh, scholarship specifically support your production needs? So we're talking about money. It's 200 words max. I'm going to call on Les. <laughs> um, I basically have a plan. Then that's, you know, have even even if the show it hasn't been written yet have a plan because you're selling yourself to us basically and you're telling us you know you're telling us how you're going to use this money and our one of our biggest things is we really are doing this to help someone and so we really want to make sure that we're actually helping someone get a leg up once again, don't try to get over on us. Some people who actually have the means apply. We will find out. <laughs> we will. So, so yeah, that's yeah. Ha have a plan. And then our next question is: What is your target audience audiences? Um, for your performance. How do you plan to reach out to these targeted groups and encourage them to come to your performance? Please provide details, 200 words max. Well, I'll jump on. Um, so it's different with COVID. You know, back in the day you would say, I would go to all this and I'd give postcards and I'll meet everybody and then I'll show up at these schools and give a talk. And 
but now it's all digital. And like Helen, Ellen said, there's a lot of digital burnout. Um, so, you know, the whole thing about Fringe and even the title of Fringe is about uh, on the outside, right? You're thinking outside, you're on the outskirts. So, you know, this is a very um, interesting way to promote. You, anybody can see your show. Normally you have to be in Los Angeles and particularly Hollywood to be able to go to a Fringe show. But now you can have somebody all the way across the end of the world see your show. So think creatively, how can I get people from X, Y, or Z to come see my show? What, you know, for my, for my show, um, we, um, we uh, partnered with the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention and um, we donated a portion of the box office and we let them speak before or after the show, after usually, um, after only. And, um, you know, we had we had kind of a built in baked in audience already there. Um, but that's because we went out and sought it, sought that connection. Um, but, it, you know, it, it can be anything. It can be partnering with another company or with a um, nonprofit or it can be talking to schools or it can be social media. But but broader, you know, it, it, more than just, oh, I'm going to advertise on Facebook. You want to hear, well, what are you targeting? Who, who's your ideal audience for this uh, and why? And it can be, you know, as big as you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, you know, you setting yourself in a box of limits. Uh, think big, you know, think on the fringe, you know, think on the fringe side of things. Um, and I think that that will benefit you in this question. Uh, just to keep moving along here, do you have any live stream experience? This question will not determine your eligibility. Um, that's very specific. It's not going to change anything. There's going to be venues who are uh, fully equipped and others that will let you make those creative decisions. So there's a lot of availability um, depending on where you're at. It's just a question for us to read that temperature. So don't worry. And you could be completely honest there. It's not going to make it or break it for us. Uh, another thing is um, going to be actually down below one question below that. Uh, I'm going to skip one question for a second, but how many people do you foresee being involved in your project team, director, stage manager, etc.? cast size, do any of these overlap? How many people would you need to be on site for filming? Again, it's going to be more about figuring out would this be able to participate on, in a live stream setting? So just getting you to start thinking of those of those challenges um, as if you're a musical or there's these other elements, what that's going to really have to look like. And if you can prove that you're thinking about that, that will, I think, speak volumes as to um, your avail availability to participate in a time like this. Whoa. So interesting. Uh, I wanted to drop this next question in the chat, which is what works have inspired you as a theater artist? Please list one to three examples and how they have affected your practice. 200 words max. Could somebody speak to that? Maybe Shirley, maybe somebody hasn't spoken. Um, so there's so this question really, again, gives us insight more into who you are. Like, you know, if you're looking at the canon of your work, like what does your work speak to? Um, what is it influenced by? Or what are you in conversation with? Um, because again, like we only have a Google Forms to go off of, um, but if you could give us context about um, what your work is inspiring or or yeah, what what is it looking forward to? I think that that gives us more, um, a, a, a bigger, more complete like, picture, honestly, of who you are. Um, and, and it should be reflected, I think, in other pieces of your application. You'd be like, oh, okay, like what they answered in, you know, one, three, and seven, like also is the same, like is, I can see that in these other works. Um, but I will also say like, if you name drop a show, we will again, look it up if we're not already familiar. And if it's like a copycat, we'll be like, well, I don't know if we need to see this again, if it's already something that um, is already influential or something like that. Um, so it is a double-edged kind of a sword um, with that question. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other experience reading that question, but that was that's usually my experience when I'm um, looking at the answers to that one. And don't be afraid, don't feel like you have to conform or don't feel that you have to, you know, put in a mainstream artist or be this cookie cutter person. Honestly, the more avant-garde, 
the better. If it sounds if it sounds crazy, nine out of ten, you're gonna be in the running because that's a big part of Fringe is taking risks. You know, people come to Fringe to see shows that they haven't seen before. You know, if you're gonna do Pippin, I can go to the Amundsen and see Pippin. You know, so yeah, so yeah, don't don't feel that you have to conform to any sort of rules or any, you know, when it comes to picking out your influences. And I love that it doesn't even have to be theater works necessarily. Oh, something that kind of got brought up. It can be uh, anything that has inspired you. And we've seen people answer that in so many different ways. Um, the next question is, do you have, this is where you drop your links. Um, do you have any links that you'd like to share with the committee, web hosted video, website, et cetera? Uh, and that's where you can also drop a link to a PDF that might have um, some photographs of your show, or we've had people drop in so many different media uh, links there. Um, does anybody want to speak to that? I just, it's interesting because you really have so many options to put in. And, and as we get into the digital age, I can't imagine this being a blank space because this doesn't have to be your show. You know, like you maybe haven't written your show, but like, tell me that you haven't like, I mean, whatever your medium is, you, maybe you're a TikTok person, honey. I don't know. I'm old, you know, maybe. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is we have out there digital uh, presence as, as artists. So, and if you don't have a digital presence and some of these questions might lead you to experience them, like the question about finding your target audience. Maybe you haven't thought about it. You're like, my target audience is my friends. What are you talking about? It's like, well, okay, but if your show is about the struggle of a Lebanese Syrian person, have you thought about maybe like reaching out to like, what, for me, because I'm just is obviously talking about me, like the churches in the area that are Byzantine, Melkite, Maronite, Catholic church. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a very specific thing and not the whole other fringe thing. So these questions are going to also like lead you to not only like give us a better understanding of you and your project, but also you. And in this situation, uh, this is just a very basic question. Do you have digital presence? You do not have something digital. I would suggest getting one. So not only for this question to have an answer, but for you and your life. So we're, we're trying to help you. You know, you see us like being like, okay, you know, like, and it's only because this is the journey that we took as like theater people that were like, oh, we're gonna learn how to produce. We're gonna learn how to put our stuff out there. So I'm not saying you haven't yet. I'm saying there, are, but there are people who haven't. And so as we are trying to like grow artists, you know, that you should have a digital uh, imprint of your work in some way. So get on it, my loves use this question to do so. Amazing. And then the one that is here, which is kind of our last big answer, which is, is there anything else you'd like to tell the review committee about yourself and or your project proposal? 200 words next. And to be honest, this question, sometimes we have been down to the wire between two people and sometimes it really does boil down to this answer and it's happened more than once so make sure you don't sell yourself short with this answer absolutely and then i just wanted to also say there was a comment that really stood out to me which is from, from us, our Hollywood fringe, of course. Uh, but it stood out to me because it made me think. Speaking of digital president, or, or, or like with digital festival, the global reach of a digital festival is really important. And feel free to name that in your application too when you're talking about any of the audiences. Because it doesn't just have to be local at this moment. You can reach out so globally. It's so cool. And let me, let me tell you, so this past year, I was scheduled to do a bunch of fringe festivals, you know, because of COVID. They had to cancel them, but a lot of them went digital. I did a show this summer that one night of this show, I got 3,000 downloads in, of this show because people from all over the world could come and see it. My friends who live in Virginia could come and see it. I have a friend from England who saw it. So it's, it's mind blowing how many people you can reach by doing this. Absolutely. 
Um, and then the last two questions are really uh, not really like going to make or break your application. It's just, will you still produce your show at the Hollywood Fringe 2021 if you don't receive the scholarship? That's just information for us to know. Um, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if there is any influence that that has. But um, it's really for a fringe to connect that that the dots there and figure out what that looks like as far as um, who's participating. And then where did you hear about fringe scholarships? Um, please specify what site if online. Uh, please do that because it really helps us know how to target more people to apply for this amazing um, scholarship in the future. And we will have time for tons of questions right now. So um, please feel free to... Um, drop any questions in the chat right now. If you have questions and you need to, them to be like an email answer, um, the email answer is going to be support at hollywoodfringe.org. When it comes to answering more like curatorial questions, I would definitely ask that now because that's more going to help you with like, my application isn't submitting. Is this where I do things? But if you have something that's like, is this okay? Um, I would definitely more ask that in this space. Um, because our committee isn't going to be reviewing the support at hollywoodfringe.org. Um, that's more of our organization helping things through. That being said, please feel free to reach out with any um, information you might have. Um, but uh, yeah, um, do we have any questions here live um, that we want to address? And if not, we'll go into some last minute tips and tricks for this application process. While we're waiting for any last minute questions, um, some t some last minute tips or tricks or things that you might need want to re-emphasize or think that they haven't gone. Oh, um, feel free to unmute and um, Diana, you can ask your question right now. Okay. Hi, um, thank you so much. This has been so informative. Um, just for clarification, if we want to be do the application, we just be, how do we let you know? Which one? Just let you. I mean, will you know by the date, or how does that work? Absolutely. Um, I just want to confirm that the question is that that when will you guys know about the applications being accepted or denied? Um, but, but, no, I think it was because I applied too soon and I wanted to do another one. So, um, how? Well, at the end, I just with my email. It will be under a different email. So um, that would be cool. And awesome. Back on. Thank you, guys. And may I add um, just a quick for you, um, language, and if you could just also include the deaf community. The deaf community does it often feel separate from the um, disabled community. So in the future, if that's something you may want to consider in your um your application and stuff. Thank you so much for that feedback, Diana. I'm absolutely gonna make that note right now, and I really okay. appreciate it. And feel um, free no. to email us about that about making sure that your application is updated. That'd be <clears throat> totally something that we can work out. Okay. Thank you so much. And then I see another question right here, which is um, how many applications will be selected? 15. This year we're doing 15 um, applicants and also our 2020 winners were not able to perform and they'll be continuing on to this program. So it's like a super program where we'll have um, like 25 uh, app, uh, scholarships all as this major co cohort, which will be a really exciting opportunity for y'all to cross promote. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Hi, Stevie Mack here. I got a quick question. I, I signed up uh at Hollywood Fringe for my one-man show. And it was saying register, because you had to register before you could apply for the scholarship. But everything I, I was filling out and saw was referring to the 2020 Fringe. I was like, well, what, 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 what? So uh, what's up with that? That's what my question. Oh, absolutely. That's because we're still working that out. We're a small ragtag team of, just to let you know how the Fringe operates. Um, we are actually updating that right now this week in, for um, our registration to open. So this will always happen with the Fringe because um, we are always op um, operating our scholarship program earlier than our registrations open for the new year. Um, so it's actually like an early submission, but the questions remain pretty much the same. Um, it's just that we want that project page built. You don't have to answer anything further than that first page. I guess my, my, oh, one more question was, uh, I went to, I'd already got a response from a theater and I went to check out the theater. I met with the owner 
And, you know, while we were sitting there talking, I was all gung-ho about going. I'm like, yeah, I can see this happening. And, and then he said, and by the way, because of COVID, they're only allowing us so far to have 15% capacity, but hopefully around the fringe, it'll be up to 30 or more. And then my whole like audience capacity thing started dwindling. And so I guess the more important point of this fringe is the streaming. Yeah, absolutely. As of right now for the fringe specific performances, um, we're doing a live stream festival. There is, there's three registration types and we are going to have a whole panel all about this to kind of di like dive a little bit deeper because it's still in flux as we're getting information from the health department, from the city and county, from our venue partners. We're trying to make it so it's the safest festival possible. And the one thing we know we can do right now is live stream from a venue. That's the only thing we know we can do. And so we're sticking with that till we have the green go uh, where we can be like, great, now there's audiences allowed. And now those guidelines will come out um, as if they are um, feasible for producers to make the money for these things to happen in this festival setting. Because I was telling somebody earlier on this call um, when we were kind of prepping, it's, it's so different for us because we're not just one show operating um, multiple nights over a venue. It, it's like, you know, we have 60,000 60, plus tickets sold, you know, that's so many people cross pollinating all over the all over the fringe. So if we had a major fringe, it wouldn't, it's not going to work in that same way. So this year, where we're at right now is going to be live stream from a venue. And that also is the opportunity for things to transition smoothly. That's why our scholarship program is built that way. And things like that, if that is allowable. But at, at this moment, we don't know. <laughs> and so I appreciate but, everybody working with us and, and, and mucking through those waters with us because that's what really live important. streaming has its advantages too, because now we're going out to the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll be doing a lot more um, workshops surrounding the benefit, like what we can do to elevate that platform, make it special, make sure that people feel um, feel included. And um, that will definitely uh, be a part of the ethos of what we're trying to produce this year. So we always do these workshops, which is like how to produce your print show, how to budget, how to do all these things. And that will continue with the idea of this new festival model in mind. Um, and from people who have really successfully done that, people have made more money sometimes or people have had mistakes and been like I wish I had done it this way and we'll learn from all of those things um there's like this really cool thing that I like to to talk about with fringe is like it's not supposed to be um like that polished not uh, some shows are some shows are like that polished top of the line ready to go on Broadway and you're like woo that's awesome to see but then there's also these like very beautiful impactful shows that have like spoken to me where it's just not it's like just a box and a person telling their story and that's what fringe is it's that whole spectrum of readiness and that's that beautiful muckiness that we're going to get to in the digital spaces that we're going to have all all of that spectrum <laughs> of preparedness um after a show premieres via live stream how many times can a recorded show be viewed through fringe it is going to be a live stream festival so um shows will have to stream uh when they when they want to produce at fringe for this year um that being said, tons more information on how and what that's going to look like is going to um, is going to uh, be coming out. Um, also, I just wanted to remind people as they're making their Hollywood Fringe um, project pages, you don't have to register. You just have to fill out that first page, and it just makes it a website basically. So if you don't have a website, you do on the Hollywood Fringe page <laughs> for your show. So just letting you know, you don't have to go through. And that's where you can also add photos or other representations. Or like if you have an artistic drawing you want to put up, or it doesn't have to have any of that at all. It's just like a way for people to be able to go through. And it also helps because right afterwards, we announce your show when you win. And it's a really quick turnaround. So it's really helpful to have that page fleshed out so that you don't have to do that when we are asking you to update it within five days so you can be announced. <laughs> um, so a little bit of thought process there. Um, and then more information about like fringe format and things like that. Let's try and avoid those conversations because we really have a space for that on May 1st. And we're going to have our full staff at that meeting who can really speak to other things that I as a programs director can as well. So I want to make sure to not overstep my own boundaries. Alex, do we have any more questions from Facebook? 
if not, I think it would be great to wrap up with just some last minute tips, anything that our committee does felt should be named one more time or reemphasized would be great to close us out. I'm just so thankful you guys are all here and whether you do the show, your show this year or next year, you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's great to see people like excited about getting back in the world and into theater and we're going to do what we have to do this time and we're going to like, but the, the show must go on as they say and what we're doing here is we're sharing our voices and we're making it happen and it's really exciting and I can't wait to connect with you guys in real life and I'm so um, thankful for the Hollywood Fringe, you know, because they really have been so flexible for the past two years. I mean, to that, I mean, when we're talking about live streaming, it's because like last year, like they, you know, they didn't want to not have a festival. Like we can, they kept trying not to not have a festival, you know, it was heartbreaking to be like, it's going to happen. No, it's in November. It's going to happen in November. You know, it's like, <laughs> We're just so, I think it's so nice to like, just be able to talk about this stuff. And I know I just want to say this as a theater artist, maybe you've had like a hard time this past year. Maybe you, there's a lot of ways to have dealt with this, right? There's people that like, I got to do things. I got to make sure I'm getting things done. There are people that were paralyzed, right? Like I can't get, I can't get anything done. And no matter where you were, it's a totally normal reaction, right? Cause it was like unprecedented what we had to go through. So let's just all take a breath. And whether this is your year to get back at it or whether you are just into this conversation to plant the seeds for what's going to happen next on your journey, God bless. We're here. We're doing it. We're making it work. The show's going on. We're all theater artists. We're all here because we love this art form and we love sharing and hearing each other's stories. So, I mean, we're winning. We're winning. We're winning hardcore. Any other last minute tips or tricks? Otherwise, I'm going to launch into a million different announcements. Okay, yeah, do, your, do, do me a favor. Just do your whole Hollywood Fringe page. I'm sorry. Like we were saying like, oh, yeah, but like just make sure the title, like do your whole Fringe page. Just like you would your Google Doc. We want to say this. Make a good application that we're going to want to read that's full of information, right? And at the same time, I would say, yeah, do your Hollywood Fringe page. Because if we go to it and we already told you we have a lot of things to click over the cheese plate, why wouldn't you have your Hollywood Fringe page filled out? That just seems like, you know, this is just logical. Like we go to a Fringe page and it feels like this person put no thought into it and the application already is somewhat vague. And then we have this other application that was obviously thought out and considerately written out and has a Fringe page of someone who obviously wants to put on a show. That's how we're going to Okay, let me also say this. If you're not someone who's technically advanced or you're not someone who writes really well, then I guarantee someone in your life is waiting for you to just ask, to be like, can I get some eyes on this? What do you think? For someone who's not involved in my show and for someone who maybe uh, doesn't know everything that's in my head, will you read this and see if my words make sense to you? What a great thing. And that person reads it, you know, just like take these steps for you. People are sitting home and waiting for things to do right now. I think that's what's happening for all. We're waiting for things to do. No, I mean, that's not it. But, um, you know, uh, we, we're reading things, make sure things are fleshed out and, um, you know, lead with your heart because we're where we can feel it, you know, like I'm feeling your energies as I'm like, as I'm watching you now, like Lorinda and like Diane, I'm like, you know, I'm here. I'm like, you're giving me things already. I'm feeling, you know, Stevie. And like, I can't wait to read your words when you're talking about things that you're passionate about, you know? So I'm so excited. This is really a great night. I love Ellen so much. Look at that smelly ass, smiley ass, pink ass, purpley light behind her with honey with her highlighter just like blinking on the cheekbones look at this woman I'm so flattered over here oh my gosh uh can I any last mo uh, words surely less um Natasha I think I think less said the word risk and um and I think that's a really great way to put it uh, take the risk, uh, be different, be yourself, um, you know, really put yourself out there. 
um, you know, that's what we're looking for. That's what's going to stand out. And then we're going to pass it on and be like, oh my gosh, you guys have to read this. And we really do discuss it. Um, and like Lorinda said, not all of us can eat the cheese plate, myself included, but there is, it really is a beautiful, wonderful, um, we don't just, you know, we really take our time and so should you, you know, we really take our time. We really put our hearts into it. And so should you. Um, so I think that, you know, just like, I love that word risk, just be brave. It's, it's scary. People are going to read these words. You're a first time producer, obviously with fringe or whomever's going to be writing the, um, the uh, application but um don't we're we want that that's what we crave so much so much so um yeah thanks for being here and we really uh we really look forward to reading like i we've already got like the names i see the names, so they're already Im embedded all right Les, shirley anything give me a thumbs up or a thumbs um, yeah, just, yeah, like everybody else says, just put, you know, just do it and, and put some thought into it. And yeah, looking forward to seeing your stuff. Uh, yeah, again, I just want to reiterate, all of us are trying to make it so easy for us to say yes to you. That's all we want to do is to say yes and to create opportunities for other people um, and to build community. And I, again, I think that, um, all of us are so excited to venture back out into the world and to see something beautiful and inspiring and moving and shocking and um, something that will help us reimagine this new time that we're walking into. Um, so I, I'm so excited for our afternoon, probably remote cheese plates. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to um, your applications, be honest, be intentional, be inclusive, um, tell good stories and um, yeah, be brave, take a risk. I mean, why not? What do you have to lose? Come on. We've just, we all went through this past year together. What do you have to lose? You know what I mean? I just want to shout out our two missing scholarship committee members um, who aren't here tonight because of other commitments. So Roy Shockley and Matthew Robinson are both also a part of our scholarship committee and will also be reviewing applications. And I just wanted to also um, go through and really give you a recap of the timeline. Applications are due on the 22nd at midnight, 11.59 p.m. technically. Um, so please make sure to have things in before then. Um, and uh, you can find that application at hollywoodfringe.org forward slash scholarships. Uh, before I go through a couple more announcements, I want to shout out the amazing staff that we have on this call and on our Facebook Live. Um, and so um, Alex Prem, our events director, thank you so much for um, always taking these questions right now from the um, Facebook and putting them into the chat here and answering questions on both platforms. Um, thank you so much to Bella Luna, who's running our Hollywood Fringe social accounts, um, always, but especially right now, um, for uh, answering questions in the chat. Um, Sina, our volunteer director slash right this year, audience services director, working to make sure that our this year is gonna go smoothly in that transition uh, and Lois Neville our operations director for uh, always being there as well uh, and again I'm Ellen our programs director uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on so many screens this year because I will literally be everywhere so if you need a friend please always feel like you can reach out to me um, I, I'm always there to support our fringe artists as they're um, going through this process and I'm so excited to meet you all because it's my literal favorite time of year um, all right, so applications are due. When are we gonna select them? Guess what? It's a really fast timeline this year. We're having our deliberation on the same day that we have at town hall number one. So I'm plugging in town hall number one, May 1st. So our deliberations also that day will be closely then um, reaching out within those couple of weeks. So you'll know mid-May. Um, so just letting you know about that, it's a fast timeline and that'll give you plenty of time to A, go to our um, venue panel, which will happen, where all of our venues will talk about the options that they are offering this year, what that's gonna look like, help you shape that. Then we'll have our marketing and budget panels. Then we'll have our like community building panels. And then we'll have all these beautiful networking events where people get to connect with each other and, um, and cross promote together. And then we'll have this raucous frame um, where we'll have amazing sellout shows and are, I'm so excited to see what that's going to look like. 
Uh, again, this year's festival dates are August 5th through the 10th is our previews. Um, our digital opening night party is going to be August 11th. And festival 2021 is August 12th through the 29th. How to engage now. Make sure you're signed up for Fringe emails. That's where you're going to figure out when these next panels are, how to get involved, what's coming out, what other opportunities there are for you uh, in our community. So please make sure that you're signed up there. Um, follow us on social media, um, Twitter and Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Use that hashtag HFF21. It's crazy that we're going to start. Um, the events for this year, by the way, are in the evening, daytime, D it depends on the day. We try to avoid, you know, those normal work hours, but also so many of us are in service positions in theater or uh, and have those those like weekend jobs. So we really try to vary the times that they're available. And also anything that has like information like this is recorded and kept for posterity, which is also something that I would love if you're like, what is Fringe? And I really want to get to know how, what this festival looks like. Go ahead and go through our YouTube channel. We have every panel that we've done for the past couple of years, I think the past five, maybe more years, um, available there. So you can really start to kind of delve in and see what that festival looks like. We also like have like audience reviews. So you can really get that on Fringe TV. So it's youtube.com forward slash Hollywood Fringe if you want to look at that. Um, upcoming events, Artist Think Tank next Wednesday, April 21st from 7 to 9. Tickets at hollywoodfringe.org. Um, also make sure that you come for our town hall. That's all my announcements. I am so, so, so <laughs> excited to be with you all again about Fringe 2021. It is uh, going to be a wild ride. So won't you join us as we navigate these waters and have a beautiful time. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm going off live. Bye, everyone.